Hey there, everybody. What's going on? Good morning. Thanks for stopping by for another show of the Game Buffet. Yes, this is my pantomime that I have to do every time because I put a graphic up right here and then I feel like I can get away with doing whatever it is that I need to do. And one of those things today is going to be revisiting the GameCube. I'm all about it and it is a fun little lunchbox that you could use for a bludgeoning to kill somebody if they want to mug you down the street at least in my bad neighborhood when i was growing up so look the gamecube launched in september of 2001 and since then it was providing joy and it still does to this day i will say that it is very very what's the word versatile it is providing you games from the left and right or i should say bottom and top and we'll start with one of those fun facts. And why I say the bottom is because in the bottom of the GameCube, you got a few ports here. And you can take out these like little slot thingies that cover the ports. And they provide you with uh, little places to put in these adapters. One of those being the broadband adapter, which was very underutilized and not pretty much supported by anybody. Uh, just a few games did, and you never heard about it and also the Game Boy adapter. Now, I think that alone is a re good reason to buy the GameCube. I also wholeheartedly regret the moment that I started taking this apart because now I can't figure it out. So we'll get back to that later. Um, I think the Game Boy adapter is a good reason on its own to buy this because uh, you get to play your Game Boy Advance games on the big screen. You get to play your Game Boy Color games, your Game Boy games, and it, they look damn good. And a reason why they look damn good is because the support for the newer CRT TVs and the GameCube supports 480p and out of the box supports 16x9, which is a weird thing because Nintendo themselves never supported 16x9, only other game devs did. Uh, but the games looked really good. And um, as far as GameCube games go, being supported by a disc on top it's nintendo's first optical disc game console and uh, they used a proprietary mini dvd now mini dvds isn't proprietary on its own what they did was they partnered with a software company to put proprietary coding on there to prevent piracy uh, so nintendo went with the smaller one not because of piracy stuff it was simply to keep the size that they were interested in making it compact i mean it is gamecube so they kept the size of this small and they used the small disc because they wanted to make it gamecube they didn't want to make a game oblong shape thing that you never heard of so they really wanted to keep it compact and they did a great job i mean this thing is small and for scaling purposes here is a can of coke and here is the gamecube the can of Coke is taller than the GameCube. Uh, it, uh, to me, that in its own, is, like, it, sh it, sh it shows how small this thing is. And it was actually not the weakest that generation. It was the second most powerful. And it would have been the most powerful that generation had they actually known that the Xbox was coming out. The GameCube was actually very powerful. A, they worked in tandem, in partnership with Art X for their graphics. But then Artex was purchased by ATI, and then ATI uh, continued their partnership with Nintendo. Now, the visuals of this thing were amazing. And before we get to the games part of that, I do want to point out two things. Um, there's two different GameCubes for, for outputting video. And one of them is better than the other. So right here is the back of this GameCube. You can see there's two ports there. The port that you are seeing on the right is the analog video, and the port you're seeing on the left is a digital video. Now, the analog video is obviously the video that we're all familiar with. I mean, it's been around since the dawn of game consoles, and this generation, it disappeared with the HDMI. Uh, but this GameCube, only has one port and that's the analog signal as well so now all game cubes had both digital and analog and for those of you that did have the digital port you were able to use the component cables which allowed you to use 
progressive scan on some games that supported it, which is obviously for a much cleaner picture. And it just looks so good. Like using progressive scan back then when I was using it, it was, it was the Cadillac of cleaning images up. I mean, it was so good. And uh, games that took advantage of that, uh, it was a night and day. And one of those games was the Resident Evil 4. Now, when I played Resident Evil 4, I played it first on the PlayStation 2. And I knew that it was on the GameCube first and I didn't have a GameCube at the time. So I just played it on the PS2. Then when I went back to play it on the GameCube, it was absolutely night and day. If you take a look here, the visuals from a side-by-side -side comparison of the PS2 and the GameCube, you can see there's a big difference. I mean, the GameCube's graphical power clearly outdoes the PlayStation 2. And to me, it's not about visuals, but this is more about clarifying the stance, the pecking order of that console generation because the GameCube was actually more powerful and a lot of people looked at it as a kid's console and that it was probably and most likely the inferior of the three available. And sorry about you Dreamcast fans and enthusiasts. I know Dreamcast existed, so there's four consoles, but that one died out. So of the three successful consoles that generation, the GameCube wasn't the weakest. It was actually the PlayStation 2. And they're reporting over games to that console, and it was simply because of money. I, it's And it's a smart business move. You can't get onto them about that. We see that a lot this generation where they only port simply because of money. It has nothing to do with favorites. They just want their pockets lined with money. So another game that supported this a lot was the Metroid Prime, which Metroid Prime was amazing simply because it was their first foray into 3D with the series and it was gonna go somewhere where it's never been before. What I find interesting about this is that the Nintendo company was actually looking into having the designer and creator of Castlevania into taking the Metroid series uh, forward. They kind of like let that go. They didn't go any further besides the discussions that they had aside from them because they wanted to go with 3D. and. To their credit, it, it did really well. It looked well, it played well, it was a lot of fun. Um, there's a couple more games that was really good on the GameCube. Right here I have a Wii Twilight Princess. I uh, just wanted to show you that Twilight Princess did come out on the Wii, if you haven't picked that up. And then what we have here, let me see, is Twilight Princess for the GameCube. Now, why I think this is relevant is because we were just talking about progressive scan and all that and Twilight Princess does support that. Um, but these two games, although they are the same game, they're not the same game on each console. And the difference being that they were mirrored. If you look at the GameCube game and the Wii game, they're actually mirror opposites of each other. So they did that because the Wii remote, people were playing with the sword in their right hand and the GameCube game, you're playing it with your left hand, I believe and they pretty much had to fix that. And they were like, look, one easy way we can fix this is simply mirror it. Another really good game was Battalion Wars. It's amazing. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. Now this game right here is interesting. It's Star Fox Adventures because it's not your traditional Star Fox. It's not your let me fly around and shoot type of game. You actually like get out your ship and you run around and you have your weapons and you free roam. So. This was really weird and it split the fan base in half. They weren't really sure what to say. Some of them didn't want to say they liked it because they knew others didn't. And some of them didn't want to say they didn't because they knew some others did. It's really good though, you should check it out. Now I wholeheartedly regret forgetting my little bongos, but this game, Donkey Kong, the Jungle Beat, it's a lot of fun. When I, when I first played this, I was like, this is, kind of dumb I don't like it especially because they had like Donkey Kong sitting in the corner and then uh, image of him like the actual Donkey Kong you're playing with like in the center of the screen and I didn't like it I just thought the whole thing was weird but it really grew on me I was having a lot of fun I didn't think about anything I was just actually enjoying the game and going with like what was expected of me of the game it was a lot of fun and it's different for platforming it's uh, your 2d side scroller I mean it's obviously in 3D, but it would like, you'd side scroll and you would go to the beat. And then right here, we have another 
great title, which will be the Mario Kart Double Dash. Now, I know a lot of Mario Kart fans, and a lot of them are not a fan of this particular one. I shouldn't say that. It's not that they're not a fan. It's that it's their least favorite. It's still good, but it's not the best or the second best or the third best. Uh, other great games that aren't here, uh, Metro Prime, Super Smash Brothers. I guess the other Resident Evil games, they're also really good. They're available on here. There's like zero. The GameCube did a lot right, and it did a few things wrong. Well, one of those wrong things was the broadband adapter. First and foremost, you were able to use it, but they didn't really utilize it. And Mario Kart Double Dash uses it, but you can only use it to system link, like how people did on the Xbox. The Xbox, you can go online and you can system link. You can connect two consoles together and play with each other. And that's great. I think that's actually fun. But to only use the LAN feature, I'm sorry, the broadband feature as a LAN feature, that's very restrictive. You should have both and then people can choose between the two. Nintendo famously said that gamers don't want to play online and this was the biggest misrepresentation of their statement. Gamers don't want to play online but you put a broadband adapter that could get your console online and play. And then you had to use online equipment to fulfill your wish of linking up consoles together. It, it, it makes no sense to me. They should have gone with another proprietary cable where you just plug it into the side. It's one cable, you don't need adapters. But it's very misleading when you have that specific online equipment integrated so that you could put adapters to not use it. It's really weird. So the GameCube remote. Now the GameCube remote is a little bit different. It's very colorful, as you can see here. And you got your big old buttons, but it's very familiar. You got your buttons set on the right, just like controllers right now. And then you have your D-pad and you got your offset joysticks, which I'm comfortable with because I game on Xbox and I prefer it like this. And then you got your shoulder buttons. I call them shoulders rather than triggers when I know it's triggers, but uh, there's, I guess, two trigger buttons and one shoulder button. But why I like to call them shoulder button is because they're kind of like shaped like one and they're not shaped like triggers whatsoever. Um, and then they go down rather than angular like an actual trigger, like how the PlayStation 3 did, how the PlayStation 4 does, how the Xbox 360, the OG Xbox, Xbox One, so forth. Uh, but still one of my favorite feelings, like I can't really express to you how, how it is. It, it, it's really pressurized and it goes in very smooth. What I don't like is that it's a singular command. It's not multi-command, so it's it's literally going all the way down and there's no input. But once you reach a certain point where it clicks, that's where the input is and there's only one rather than multiple. Like when you're playing Forza on Xbox One, how you can press the gas just a little bit to go just a little bit rather than full throttle or not. Um, but overall, this remote is one of my favorite remotes I've ever played on. And it was simply because I played a lot of Smash Brothers. And this, to me, this was one of the perfect remotes, period, for a fighting game like that. Now, another remote that I don't have right here, and I'm sorry for calling it a remote. A lot of you get onto me about that because it's actually a controller. But the controller that I like is the Wavebird. It was actually coming in silver and in gray and it was wireless and it was using RF technology to send a signal back and forth from the console to the remote and it was done via an adapter put on the front of the console and the controller would pick up these signals and you can play at a d decent distance you'd use your batteries of course and it would last a really long time its battery life was in insane and it was the same comfortable feeling it was a little heavier but it was kind of it was comfortable, kind of like how the Xbox One Elite controller is now. It's a little heavier, but it's actually good to have that heft. If you ever get a chance to pick up the Wavebird, make sure you do. I haven't seen any in probably eight years, so I'm gonna make the assumption that they're hard to find because they're immensely popular. After talking about the controller, there is a fun Easter egg. If you start up the console itself and you hold down the Z button, the traditional GameCube menu going from its normal sound actually changes to some like weird squeaking tumbling sound and then with a little kid laughing 
it's a little creepy. Now with four controllers plugged into the console, you get a different sound. Now, the GameCube was pretty interesting overall. It provided a lot of games that sold over 21 million consoles worldwide. And uh, it was probably one of the last power PC consoles. And traditionally, it's all from Nintendo, I believe, because there's the GameCube. And then there was the Xbox 360, then the Wii and the Wii U were all power PC based architecture and uh, three of those last four were from Nintendo and I believe we're gonna see power PC go away with the successor of the Wii U which would be the Nintendo switch um, the console itself did a lot of good for gaming I can't think of any reason for you not to have a GameCube Ooh, cool other fun fact Luigi's Mansion that was like one of the hit games on the GameCube and one of the problems that the GameCube had was that it didn't have a Mario game launching with it. And a lot of people thought that was a little odd and they wanted that. But what they did have was Luigi. And he stepped in and in the game, he was supposed to step in to save Mario. And so he kind of took the limelight and it was pretty cool. I liked it. The game is really good. It's also found on the Nintendo 3DS and obviously it's in 3D. But here's the fun fact, Luigi's Mansion supposed to be on 3d displays with the gamecube uh, the gamecube supports 3d but they took away the feature because they felt like 3d wasn't mainstream enough the lcds were way too much money they actually have a display that you can attach to the gamecube that supports 3d and those are out in the market right now they're wild but they're there's literally almost none when Nintendo saw that nobody was really buying them and how expensive they were, they pretty much canceled the product, shut it down, said we're not doing this. I think it's a, a true testament to Nintendo's dedication and wanting to be in the forefront uh, of gaming and pioneering. So what else could I say? I mean, it, it's a great console. It's the, it's the GameCube. Anyways, everybody, thank you for stopping by for another Game Buffet. I appreciate it. A lot of you were excited for this episode, and uh, so was I. It was pretty cool playing with this and, and checking it out, hearing it start up, seeing the menu, checking out these other games, and seeing how well they hold up. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by for another show. This is too much food. Please don't forget to rate, comment, favor, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. That's the thing. I love this. Where is it? Oh. Bless you! Alright, welcome back to Too Much Food! <laughs> With my sex change, today we're going to be pretending like this never happened. And Petri's pajamas. No? That's right.